Look at this place. Exotic Indian restaurant. What does that mean? They clean the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> We find ourselves in the, uh, in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. This is like old school New York, man. This is the last part of New York City to start changing over. New York sucks. What do you mean New York sucks? It's hung over. Girl had glitter all over her the other day. Slept on the couch at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's going on? <laughs> For the people out there that love Carl on Instagram and Twitter and the Ruizing and it's a and real the, thing and, 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 the, and the celebrity of it all I am one of the very few that get to see the real Carl <laughs> I get to see Carl in the aftermath oh my god I'm such a mess could someone wake up Carl so I could podcast with him literally I was sleeping on the couch when you showed up god God, what am I doing? Am I, I don't know how I survive. I honestly don't. And, and like, there's times I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm like, how am I not dead? Are you happy when you open your eyes? Yeah. Because <laughs> I know it's party time. <laughs> What's the first word you say when you open your eyes? I hate you, Mom. <laughs> It's all your fault, it's all Mom. Your fault. You made a monster. You know how like you're like kind of your parents. Like every once in a while, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in someone's home. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, they must have been dark individuals because I am so crazy. Like, and they they live such a gingerbread cookie house life. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, they must have done some shit. Like to make me this. Impervious to anything. Yeah, but it sounds like you're the only one in your family that parties. Your dad, we learned he does, he didn't really party. Your mom, uh, she sounds like she's like uh, doesn't she goes really... to Zumba and complains about the neighbors in the condo. That's did, all she does. Does she really do Zumba? Oh, so she has like a Zumba outfit. It makes me sick. What kind of pattern? Oh, it's like uh, like an '80s like Max Headroom like <laughs> sweatsuit. And Does she wear headbands? She has a headband and like she has like the Karen I want to speak to a manager haircut. <laughs> oh, she does. <laughs> yes, she does, dude. It looks like a helmet, a red helmet. Ah! <laughs> Podcast noises. Uh, someone recognized you and just wanted to say hi. Where where are we going? The starting of a lawnmower? No? All right. I heard, I got the landscaping joke, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, we're, we're going to go see somebody. Here's New York, look at all the garbage. Save the environment! <laughs> you fucking losers. How many uh, bags of garbage you think? Uh, that's 50. 50 bags of garbage, all filled with plastic, but enjoy your, enjoy your paper straw. Yeah, turtle's good. <laughs> is that a gunshot in that window? Wow, that is a gunshot. Yeah, that's a gunshot. I told you it's old school, Lower East. Uh, that looks great. Lower East Side of Manhattan. Oh, we were in an Uber, and uh, Carl... Um, I'm full of glitter. Carl's full of glitter, yes. <laughs> but you also said you hate buttons, and I got really excited. <laughs> oh, my God, that was so funny. At, and I gave you a up top, and you gave me a nice up top, by the way. It was a Uber. strong up top. Nice. It was strong. But then I got confused because we were talking about different buttons. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like when people wear like buttons that have sayings, I hate buttons. But you thought I was like talking about shirts with buttons, which is completely crazy. 
Like, how do you fucking hate buttons? <laughs> like, how long have you been wearing your pajamas that you hate buttons? Have you ever seen me with a shirt with buttons on it? Never. Thank you, so. No, I, I did. I did. You did? When we were when we were at Sirius XM, you went into a meeting because we were in trouble because Roland. Yeah. And you wore buttons. You wore like a Paul Smith that had like little bluebirds on it or something and it had like buttons. And I was like, <laughs> and I could see your belly button and I hated it. <laughs> that, that was my, oh uh, shit, I'm in trouble shirt. Is that your in trouble shirt? I got one or two, yeah. Yeah, well. It didn't work. No, you were definitely in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you were a hundred. Why did we get out of the fucking Uber this fucking far? I don't know. I thought I knew where I was going. I'm hot, bro. I haven't slept yet. Bro, you're Cuban. You shouldn't be hot. What are you talking about? There's a reason we left. Oh, you don't want to deal with the hot in No. Oh. That's like the first time I went to Cuba. I'm like, I called my mom. I'm like, Mom, fuck communism. You should have left here just out of principle. <laughs> Why did it take communism for you to leave? <laughs> I mean, communism was the problem? This place is awful. There was bugs like picking up fruits. Like that's how big they were. Is it really hot in Cuba? Oh my god, ninety percent humidity. Anywhere where you can grow tobacco, you don't want to live. Don't you get a nice ocean breeze though, or no? Oh, stop with your ocean shit and your surf casting stories. No, there's no breeze. The winds is hot. It comes hot off the beach. It's hot everywhere. Old school Bowery, bro. You don't want to say hi? Come on, open. Okay. All right, he doesn't uh, want to say hi. He doesn't want to say hi because he still has a heroin syringe stuck in his head. Ooh. Don't you dare. Look don't you, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Fuck you! What? I didn't do anything! No. <laughs> That's the problem. All right. Wait, the problem is I didn't do anything? So you say... Opie, I've never seen people just... You want to go for some ramen? <laughs> People just randomly hate you. <laughs> what? Stop! What's she saying? She says she doesn't like buttons. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she's screaming. Why? She walked by a hundred people. She looked at you and goes, fuck you. <laughs> no, she didn't. I'll let you have it, but you know that's oh not true. Oh my God, Opie, what do you have inside of you? <laughs> I'm sweating. That was exciting, wasn't it? I feel alive Ooh. today, man. What are you I feel dead today. <laughs> I think we're at our destination. That's cool. Where is it? Right here. Children's haircut. <laughs> Why would you even put it? It's 20 bucks. <laughs> it's men's haircut, 20 bucks. Children's haircut, 20 bucks. Ladies', Ladies haircut, haircut, 20, 20 bucks. bucks. Everything's 20 bucks. Just oh. right. Come in here and give me 20 bucks. <laughs> Hot towel shave. 20, 20 bucks. bucks. Oh my god, that's back crazy. trim. 20 bucks. That's crazy. That's really funny. It just should say, hey, come on in and give me 20. Yeah. Back trim and chest trim are 22, though. Those are the doozies. Oh, they're not happy that they have to do nah. the, ch the chest trim. Fucking taking my shoulders down a notch. <laughs> <laughs> not, hey, you want to do that for the podcast? I'll pay for a nice back trim for you. No, pay for you for a cap so I can go back to my goddamn restaurant. All right. I got a fucking, I got an interview with fucking a Spanish newspaper. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. For La Cubana on 15th Street in the uh, meatpacking district across from the Google. The Googs. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to buy you one of these bears. A carved bear? Yeah, I think it, it takes talent to carve these things. I would put it on eBay immediately. Why? Once you gave it to me. Because I need money. I got divorced, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're still dealing with that? Ugh. All right, I think it's this. Hey, it's Opie and Carl. Come straight to the back. Drugs. <laughs> you still don't know where we're going? No, but I'm all in. All right. Now we're, we're in a we we're in a creepy hallway. Well, that dude works out. Hey, Bro, hey, what's man, up, what's man? up? My name's Brian. Over hey, Brian. Place. Opie. Lewis. Luis Gomez, I already started podcasting. Oh, you're podcasting already. <laughs> How are you, brother? How you doing, man? You ever meet Carl? Come on, man. Me and Carl are old friends. How you doing, brother? You're doing a good job, man. Chilling, dude. Welcome. What's going on? That's Where do we want to sit? Here, come. Uh, we'll come talk shit back here for a minute. All right. This is like you got a lot of like people just walking the perimeter, man. What's yeah. up? Yeah, yeah. We got, <laughs> a of, we got a bunch of employees, man. Oh, it's employees. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was. Uh, 
Just homeless people? Well, we just got we just took the walk. Holy shit, man! This is some action around here. Yeah, yeah. It's East we Park had some shit. Asian woman just yelling at me. Fuck you! Yeah, she yeah. Used to work for Sirius. <laughs> yeah, no, she was, she, was an, she was an Anthony fan, right? Sirius <laughs> staff. Yeah, dude. Uh, well, where do you? You live on where you west west side I'm or east side? I'm on the east side. Yeah, okay. see you right here. Yeah, he's uh, he's got his restaurant at 15th Street. That's he's packing. Gotta come in. I know. I would love to, dude. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. So so this got weird, but um. Me and Carl just did a podcast, and we were talking. We were both supporting you with the whole Louis yeah, C.K. Man. thing, Skank Fest. Thanks. So then I was like, you know what? Me Congratulations, Lu- by the way, man. That's a that's a lot of work. Yeah, dude. It's that's a lot. A, I put I put events together. That's a yeah. lot of work. It's an insane. And I, and I talked to Opie about this too. I mean, without you know what you guys did, literally. I mean, just literally without Opie and Anthony and and the show that you guys had, we wouldn't have done an event like this. Our right. podcast wouldn't exist. The right. lineage is there. I hear you know? that. I hear that so much. I, yeah. Uh, Christ, Joe Rogan gives us credit. Uh, Matt Farrer from Smoking Tire just I gave us credit. I've been fine without you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're thriving, actually. I'm thriving. <laughs> we were the inspiration for so many shows, and, and, and we're fucking slumming it. Right? Yeah. What the fuck? How does that work? Yeah it's, yeah, it's. I mean, look, you know, these fans are psychotic, and one of the things that we hear so much is, you know, it, it, it's the same type of energy is that Opie and Anthony crowd where he just balls out funny, funny first. Right. Um, and that's why the fans come out and, you know, Louie, he didn't, we didn't book Louie. We can't afford to book Louie. It's crazy, right? right? He came well, ex- out. Explain uh, Skank Fest for my audience too. I, yeah. I know we share a lot of people, but there's probably a bunch of people that I'm don't sure, know yeah. about Legion of Skanks and Skank Fest. So walk us through that just a little bit for the setup. And then we're going to get to the Louie thing. Yeah. Uh, Legion of Skanks is, is one of my podcasts and it's uh, me, Big J and Dave Smith. And it's just, the, you know, we, we call it the most offensive podcast on earth and we do it on purpose. We, people know what they're coming for. Right. You know, we don't, we don't shy away from it. I think that's why we don't get in trouble. Whereas other, other people are tiptoeing around it. Right. We just, you know, we just tell you what it is. And, uh, you know, over the past few years, we've, you know, we've developed a pretty hardcore audience. And I think there's not many other options for that type of comedy. So I think they're, they're coming to us because we're one of the only people that are sort of taking those chances. And uh, four years ago, we it was it was a party, dude. Two hundred people came out to the Creek and Cape one night. We called this Gang Fest. It was just shows all day and all night for two days. So, so did it start as like not a goof, but like a hey, we're gonna hang out. In two weeks, uh, Creek and Cave come on by. And it yeah, was we, kinda... it was a comedy festival, but it wasn't a festival. It was a party, right? And we just sort of outgrew it. So, you know, four years later, we're now at this venue, 1,200 people a day, three you know, three days. Um, you know, it's you know, we 65% of the people that came out were from out of town. This is their vacation. This is like a destination for them. And, um, yeah, dude, it's fucking, it's crazy. I mean, people got to come out and see it. You won't understand it until you're there. I know you guys did Traveling Virus. Right. A lot of people compare it to that type yeah. of energy. Um, I told you uh, offline, I'm like, that was one of my biggest regrets that we didn't continue that, that fucking traveling virus thing. We were, we were onto something huge. Yeah. There, well, it's just the live experience, especially now, like online, you know, there's not, people don't really care anymore. There's so many different options. You can click on a, a million different channels, a million different websites. So having an actual live experience and connecting in a different way, it just doesn't exist. So, uh, you know, I... When we conceptualized this, that was sort of the idea is we wanted to put it in one place. You couldn't escape it. We were doing a lot of those rock cruises. Yeah, we were yeah. doing ship rocked, right? right on. And when you do one of those cruises, you can't escape the fans. You're w- right there with them. Right. You're eating at the same time. You're hanging out on the same deck, same pool. So we kind of took that concept and we made it just a big, giant party. And, you know, people come out to We had Michael Che this year, David Tell, Gilbert Godfrey, Janine Garofalo. Those are the people that are, that are booked. And then guys like Bill Burr and Louis C.K. hear about it. And they uh, they want to show up. They want to show up because every one of their friends are partying. Everyone's yeah. hanging out. And, uh, yeah, I'm proud of it. It's one of the most, uh, you know, obviously Gas Digital and all the things we do are great. But it's one of the things that I'm most proud of, yeah. you know, this festival. So how did Louie get involved? So we fucking put it into the ether, dude. You know what's up. Yeah. You, you can't book Louie. There's yeah. no getting him to come out. You know, we three months ago, we were like, dude, how cool would it be if we created an environment where Louie wanted to come and hang, right? And Bobby Kelly's there and Joe List's there. All of his friends are hanging out. And I'm sure it just kept on getting back to him. Oh, this is a cool environment. And he came out. Um, and those fans are so hardcore. But no so one knew cool. it that he was going to make his, uh, an appearance and do no a set, one, right? No See, one knew. Awesome. The day before, Joe List texted me saying, Louie's going to come hang out tomorrow. Um, and we knew he was going to come hang. But that energy from that crowd, he was like, holy shit, this is awesome. And he decided in that moment to go up and to test out some material and you know it, it kind of sucks for him because every time he gets up it's a shit storm for everybody involved and people start fighting going back and forth 
And uh, but for me, dude, I'm a pig and shit, dude. I'm a fan first. Uh, you know, I grew up watching these guys do comedy, and it's like, you know, last year we did the uh, the Tough Crowd reunion. Con Quinn decided to do his Tough Crowd reunion specifically at Skankfest, nice. which is, I mean, come on, dude. You, you know, like as, you can't as beat a, that. You as can't a comedy beat that fan, you know, I, yeah. you know, and they do it for the right reason because these are. You know, the, some of the most special fans in the world, and you know what it is. You know you know the most, you know, when you have like really good fans. A lot of guys are dickheads online. That's all online. Yeah. These guys will probably sh- trash me on Twitter, on Reddit, and all these websites. But when they come out in person and they're hanging out, everyone's partying. Yeah. The energy, dude, I'm telling you right now, it's so positive. I, 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 cu- I couldn't be happier. I really it's am so on weird. cloud it's nine. A, you have a positive energy for something called Skank Fest. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> The reason that I, I usually never comment on politics or anything because you know I'm, I'm in food and I should just be quiet about yeah, most shit. But what the fuck is wrong with like other come like this new type of comedian that's offended? Like it's so weird. You it's know a business. I mean? It's a, it's a business. Are they doing it for clicks? Sort of. Yeah. I don't know that they they. It's as simple as that. They don't think that. They probably think they're doing some sort of social justice, but. Right. You know, it's, it's just a business. You know, people click on things. People want something to talk about. They're going to move on to those same exact group of people. It's a group mentality. They move on to the next big issue next week, whatever it is. Yeah. They're going to have an opinion. They're going to get their retweets. Well, so, Well, he's fast-forwarding, though. So Louis does his set, and then all hell breaks loose. Like, oh, my God, he, he, he's, he shouldn't be working ever again. And we got to, you know, we got to get our torches out and burn them alive. Like, it just gets insane. So, yeah. so walk us through what happened. It, it wasn't really the, see that's the thing it feels that way right because when you live no no line, i know everyone there loved it but my point is like afterwards the sort of the the uprising. after skank fest louis ck does his set i i saw some videos online everyone was like holy fuck that was the coolest thing ever and they were yeah. laughing their asses off at his new material loved it it was perfect for you guys obviously then then t- walk me through how it turns into this this garbage after the fact yeah the first person just tweets something and then the next person does and then you know some feministy type blog comes out talking about you know workplace safety and and it's it's just workplace safety which is just fucking crazy I mean let's get real like if Louis's not pulling his dick out now guess what guess what he's not doing it now (laughs) this is the safest time to hang out with Louis safe as it gets skank fest I'm telling you right now he's just not pulling his dick out now you're okay you're safe (laughs) and to be honest with you these people don't have to come there's no workplace safety issue people couldn't have been more excited the women there the men there the people of color the gay people the trans people dude there's so many different types of people that were there they were losing their fucking minds yeah. and i expected a few people to talk shit and, and the reality is you can literally break down the numbers one out of every 30 people are saying something negative right so it's so easy to let that negativity sort of seep into you and yeah. you, you you know but when you look at it like i'm analyzing the numbers now because it's a business and we have to look at the the social yeah, I, imprint of course and i know the numbers the fun the funny part is these people don't fucking get it. every time they write the word skank fest right. i get to go to my sponsors next year and go look at how much no more shit. social attention oh, we're getting I, this I, year sure. they're just paying us I, more money every time they write the word right. skank fest. i saw you i saw you tweet that uh skank fest made it into newsweek that's doesn't yeah get, it doesn't get better it's crazy that. right, it's right. fucking crazy the fact that and newsweek congratulations. is writing the words legion of skanks right it's hilarious <laughs> but then you you were uh you were you were like i don't want to say fighting you were pushing back against uh, uh sarah schaefer and who else a couple other comics that were out there yeah and sarah like I, i've known sarah casually for a while Here's the thing. Dude, we're all comics. We're all just trying to... We all try to pick our path and do what we do. Um, you know, I feel like comics shouldn't be trying to come at other comedians. And I, I defend myself. And there's this weird thing, and you guys deal with it, because I don't have a responsibility to protect some assholes who are trashing me online, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll quote them or I'll respond. And then it becomes, well, now I'm sending my fans on the attack. No, yeah. that's... That is a byproduct of attacking of people course. with a fan base. Of if I go and I trash fucking, you know, the offspring, right? right. Some fans of that band are going to go, fuck you, dude. You don't know yeah. what you're talking about. And yeah. they might say mean things about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boo fucking who? Right. It's the internet. Right. Grow up. Who right. gives a shit? Right. Get off Twitter for a minute. You're not really a victim. I've, I've just... I've dealt with real shit in my life. Right. So if your worst problem in life is that there are 25-year-old dudes with fucking beards saying mean words to you about the internet, <laughs> you have a great fucking life, dude. What a life you have. Holy shit. That's, that's, right. Right. that's a perfect, that's perfect, that's perfect description of it. So, uh, yeah, me and Carl talked about it. I mean, it's funny because most of the people that are now uh, speaking out about Louis C.K., they're doing it because it's, it's safe. It's a safe space. Of course. Because when Louis was on top of the world making movies, his TV show, selling out Madison Square Garden, 
all those motherfuckers kept quiet, and they knew he they was. They to work with him. He knew he was a creep. It was worse. The he story, knew. Opie. The story was worse. The story was that Louis held the door closed, wouldn't let these girls out of right. the room. Then the New York Times article came out, and turns out, oh wait, that wasn't what happened. He yeah. asked these girls to jerk off yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. He's a little bit of a weirdo. Right. By the way, not that much of a weirdo. I know weird motherfuckers. Right. What type uh-huh. of nerd, prudy assholes are we? Like, oh yeah. my god, yeah. he likes to jerk off in front of women. That's it. Yeah. That's the big kink. Get the but, fuck out but, of here. But my point is that. You know, it was brave to speak up when Louis was on top of the world. Now, of now people are like, ah, Louis can't really do anything for me, so I'm finally going to speak out. And I go, fuck you. It's all that's bullshit. Not, that's not brave. And, it, and most of it, most like, of it is like, fake outrage. Beat up this guy's festival. You know what I mean? Like, Louis is doing some fucking. Whatever he does, who cares? I know. You know I've been listening to his comedy for five minutes. You know he's a creep. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, but I've been, the whole, I, he had a whole career. But I've been in of being a creep. Yeah. And it's fine. I, I've been in his. Funny. I've been in, in his shoes. He's not bummed. Trust me. Oh, me? Ex- oh no, no. No, the all. exposure he got for oh. Skankfest is amazing. Oh, I couldn't be any. Happier. Yeah, yeah. I'm a pig in shit right now. I these people aren't people. It's it's the. It's only a net positive. These people will never, ever, ever like right. me. There's nothing I'm going to do, whether right. Louis shows up or I have Milo on my podcast or whatever it is. These people, they're going to call me a piece of shit. They're going to call me racist, sexist, misogynistic, whatever it is. Um, so all I can do is I can just chip away and get new fans. And there's so many people that love the fact that we're taking chances. And it's legitimately because there's nobody left. The industry, it, you are... If you come out and take any chances, there's so much at risk even associating with you that people won't even, people, all the people that are saying silent online, everyone agrees. Everyone right. agrees that Louis should be able to go back and work. 99% of comics right. you talk to in New York and LA go, right, right. yeah, it's not that bad. What are we talking about right, here? Right, right. But nobody will vocalize well, but, it because they're afraid of the backlash. But he all he also did his time, if you believe that he, he deserved to be punished. He yeah. did his time. His career is way lower well, than it used to be. people will go, oh my God, well, nine months isn't enough time. Let me tell you something. If you create... It's not just nine that's months. That's a long time, by the way. For, right. If you create... Yeah. Stand, comics are obsessive, dude. Yeah, comics yeah. get up you know, multiple times no, I, per I night. Get it. yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you're stopping a guy from creating for that long. It's fucking... It's a painful process. But they're ignoring the fact that it's not just nine months. He's... he's it's going to take years if he ever gets back to the level he was at. Oh, yeah. Hollywood is pretty much not going to do anything with him anytime soon. So the best he's he's got is to rebuild his stand-up career, maybe get back up to the arenas again. But right. all that other shit is gone for a while. Well, he sells out in for seconds. Addison yeah, no, Improv, he just did four that. shows for next that. week. Yeah. He sold out in seconds. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the he's so ripe for a comeback, and I think that Louis was the mistake they made. The, the industry... It was just timing. Right. Had Aziz, the story right. about Aziz, had it come out before Louis, yeah, I think yeah. Aziz would have gotten fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They needed to kind of kill one of those guys, and it was sort of going overboard, and then Aziz happened, and Chris Hardwick yeah. happened, and then everyone went, wait a minute, all right, time out. We're going kind of crazy here. These guys aren't actually victimizing people. Right. They have these sexual yeah. things. That, look, all of our fucking sex shit shouldn't be put out there. What, my, what I like to do with my dick, and, and you, know, yeah. what, you know, that's my business, and I think that that's sort of like we're publicizing people's private lives, their business. There was not really any victims here. I, I go very extreme on this, dude. I, I'm sorry. See, like, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know. I mean, maybe I should play the other part a yeah. little bit. Those girls seemed like they were pretty pretty fucking bothered by what Louie did that day. I, you know, Maybe. I, yeah. I don't know. Were they kind of? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there, but uh, they seemed like they had an issue with it at the time, but were too scared to speak out. I don't know if that's the case, though. I mean, uh, you kind of hear that, like, oh, my God, they intimidated these girls, and they... Uh, I feel like... It happened. It was a little bit like, oh, that was kind of weird. And then you move on because yeah. we're adults. It's right. sex. I mean, look, how many times? Every time I fuck, I, I, I regret it a little bit afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Dog, I've never had sex with a chick and I've done something. I'm like, ah, dude, hours. I should have worn a rubber. I shouldn't have fucked that chick. I, I know somebody that she knows. Right. There's always some little fucking. Do you have a hose? I need a shower yeah, immediately. Dude. I'm telling you. like, but, so yeah, I Fair think, enough. But, I mean, my point, though, is, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you know this way better than me, but it seems like the comics that speak out are the ones that aren't really that funny. It oh, seems, of course. It seems like if you're really funny, you don't give a fuck what Louis did. No, yeah. but if you're really it, funny, you have real problems. You've dealt with some real shit in your life that that you you can't. I can't. I can't imagine having so much privilege in my life that I can 
look at some shit like that and go, I'm drawing emotion now. And I'm, I'm, I'm that's crazy. That's, you have a yeah, good yeah. life, dude. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you get up in the morning, you could actually care about something like that. That's fucking crazy yeah. to me. So, no, yeah, the, uh, typically, they're people without anything going on. They have nothing to sell. They have nothing to, to give. And, you know, it's easier to get likes on somebody else's opinion um, and, and have like my, you know, everyone go, oh, I agree with that. Let me click like. Then actually create something that people like and want to share. It, right. That's a really you, difficult thing. What do you think of... Um your fellow comics just eating each other. It happened in radio, man. And, yeah. and now it's starting to happen in comedy. It's like, yeah, you guys got to stick the, f- the fuck together, man, with the, the PC bullshit and everyone being offended, fake offended, left and right. And it's getting harder and harder for you guys to do your, your, your craft. It is to a certain degree. But it, once again, I think... Once you step off of the internet, because that's what I do. Like, I used to really, like, kind of go, like, oh, it's crazy. It's a war out there. And then I go, no, it's not really. Like, we have 10 venues right now that have hit us up being like, we would love to host Skankfest. Oh, my God, can Louie come next year? Like, <laughs> yeah. the, the fact that Brooklyn Bazaar, like, they released a statement. They, they fell for that dumb trap where there's right. a dozen people across the country that are never going to spend money right. in their venue at, versus a thousand people a day that came in and spent a lot of money that loved this thing. And it, so it's so it's, explain, it's, there's, the it's internet a, and reality. Yeah, there's reality, Lewis. and I live in reality. Explain that though. So the venue you had uh, Skankfest at, where Louis showed up, they felt the pressure and they felt like they had to make a statement for right? no reason. The next day they they released a statement saying we didn't know he was going to show up. We felt like with the rowdy crowd, we would be putting our staff at risk if we were to uh, have him not go on. Which first of all, it's a breach of contract. We can put anyone we want up. But we rented the venue; it was a rental. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Second of all, their staff. Were, I mean, like kids, like little children, like school children. They all wanted pictures. I would they assume. were losing their mind. They couldn't have been happier. The manager of the place came up to me afterwards. After all this, he was like, "Dude, I'm really sorry. The owners just took a stance. The place is for sale. They they don't want to lose value. They don't want to have bad press surrounding it. They're, when you're selling the place, there's almost no downside in sort of taking that position. So I sort of understand it from their perspective. But um, yeah, it was sh- it was just sort of shitty. It was unnecessary because nobody would have cared. Nobody was begging the Brooklyn Bazaar building for an opinion. Right. They, like nobody, there was no pressure. Maybe yeah, they inserted themselves for no reason. For no reason. And then they lost a great partner. They lost an opportunity to possibly work with us another year. I mean, we make them a lot of money. They I, fucking threw you under the bus. Yeah, they really and, did. And you know how much money they made out of that. I know, I, I know because we literally, we, we know. It, it I was, know. <laughs> I mean, I know the numbers. Festival. It's my festival. You I know. You either could tell us or not. That's fine. But it, they, made over, they made over $100,000 in bar sales over the $100, weekend. $100,000 and then they throw you under the bus the next the bus. fucking day because of a few fucking idiots online. They panicked. Yeah. There's about 19 bars after they hear this that are going to call them like 100 grand. I'm yeah, doing yeah. it. Dude, it's, That's a big deal. It's a big deal. And and our fans, they couldn't be, to say they're this rowdy crowd, here's the funny part, okay? They look like they're meathead, metalhead, tough guys. They're the sweetest people yeah. you'll ever meet. There hasn't been a single fight at Skank Fest, four years running. There, Dude, girls, let me tell you something. If you're a chick, if somebody fucked with a chick at my festival, that person would be dragged into the street and fucking yeah. beaten down right if somebody was trying to touch chicks if somebody like dude my my uh, my ex kim kong a great comic she crowd surfed at skank fest we have like comedy shows with people crowd surfing it's a different level here and i'm talking about like she said she could feel the hands going everywhere but her butt like it was like so respectful like everyone like <laughs> there's this le- like the the women were treated like like queens and you know and i think it's because everyone sort of looks at us like we're these pieces of shit like all oh, the legion of skanks guys they, they they don't like women and i think people are a little sensitive to it and it was like we we don't send that message just cuz we make dumb jokes and we want to joke about whatever um that doesn't uh, it's just a, look i grew up on fucking dice and eddie murphy right. i grew up on yeah. fucked up comedy i'm right. sorry that's just what i think is funny so uh did you pay the medical bills for uh, for uh, the people that uh, had to do the Robert Kelly oh, <laughs> crowd surfing, I stumbled I yeah. stumbled on that one, but I saw a video of Robert Kelly uh, yeah, I saw it. fucking crowd surfing. Oh, I'm like, Jesus! Yeah, dude, those, they were. It was some like, of those guys are gonna need chiropractors. It's so cool, like in a comedy show, to see that level of excitement. I mean, and just to damper it with some and 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 trolls will always be trolls, but what really took me by surprise was as I'm looking at Louis. You know, Twitter. I'm like, what the fuck are these other comedians? Yeah, like that's what bothered me. It's like as a chef, right? Like shit goes down, we stay quiet. Yeah, right? we stick together because we're working. This is our uh, livelihood, and just to see that that posturing. It's, got, like, it's uh, gotten it's gotten worse in the last ten years. So and then you, and then I would well, go on the comedian. Has a vo- it's easier to have a voice no, now. I so that's really what it is. It's it's right. the fact that you can have an opinion and have an immediate response to it. Right. Comics were addicted to that immediate response. We want that laugh. And now we have this thing where we don't even need laughs anymore. It's likes yeah, yeah. and it's retweets and it's you know it's just um 
Yeah, I, look, I get it, but I ignore it. I, I mean, if you get offline, like, you go to the supermarket, nobody cares. Nobody's protesting me for having right. Louis. Like, you know, I, I, I walked down the street. I Life is great. And what a lot of these comics that complain, they don't understand that they're just making it harder for themselves because eventually it'll turn and, and people will go after of them. Course. man, that's how it works. Yeah. That's why, like, uh, I've I've done this fucking rap a million times, but when I'm as said nappy-headed hoes, yeah. I, me and Anthony were screaming. We, weren't, we were one of the only shows that supported Imus to that whole thing. And, like, one of the only and I'm like you guys are crazy they're gonna come after all of us you idiots and sure enough you fast forward the, the black radio shows especially were going after nappy headed you yeah, know yeah. and attacking Imus it was racist and like you you guys do morning radio and, and, and comics certainly know this too you know damn well Imus was going for a joke of course but the problem here is you get him fucking fired you just made your job way fucking tougher they and eventually just... and eventually they're gonna go after you it's so obvious well, it's, it's and then you happening. fast forward 10 years the regular radio is a garbage dump yeah because uh, everyone is scared shitless. Well, yeah, and, and it's going to happen with the internet. That's where well, the internet's going. it's going to happen going. with yeah. comedy. That's what I'm That's trying what to say want. here. Yeah, yeah the, comedians are, are the canary in the mind. They're the ones that you learn about politics, you learn about social issues, because the joke, you can get through this information. Yeah. It's it's the it's the real news but is the same, a comedian. The same way that they sort of created that on radio, television, the, the same limitations will be there on the internet. The, my job is just to navigate this whole right. thing. I, there's no changing it. There's no, to pretend that we're going to be able to say what we want to say on podcasts in 10 years. Yeah. No way. I it's know. fucking over. You crazy. The N-word, gone. Off of iTunes, right. off of YouTube. Right. Off of, I mean, it's just, platform, you, you, it'll be done. You, first well. of all, now you can't make money. Uh, off of it and they're going to eventually literally just they're going to just put an algorithm in and any no-no words anything that will, it'll just be gone it'll just pull the well, content immediately well that, that that's the other thing when when they were trying to bury the n-word and make it you know uh, uh, well you can't say it anymore I'm like look I don't need to say the n-word but I, but I also understand free speech and the First Amendment. I'm like, you idiots. Every group's going to want their word fucking taken out now. Yep. And then every group will get their word taken out. And then there'll be a secondary word and a third. And now it would be complete sentences. I'm like, yeah. no, you can't do this. But the and sure for, enough, for, one, for you know, 40 years, look, the, there's, there's repercussions. If you go to the supermarket, here's, here's, here's the funny part. Ready? We're talking about going to the supermarket and getting yeah. offline. Ready? If I go to the supermarket and say the N-word, I'm going to probably get my ass kicked. Yeah, of course. Right? That's the that's the reality. Have an issue. It's in the real re- in, in, it, in the real world. So the idea- in the real world. Sorry, to interrupt, but it takes care of itself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it takes care of itself. It all takes care of itself. Right. We we this is how society works. But, the, but as far as comedy goes and radio shows and or you get fired from your job. I mean, if you if you work in a restaurant and you know right. you're out there using no. words like that, and rightfully so. Yeah. But comedians and people who are creating content. You need to give them the opportunity to try to find funny and really ugly and dark right. things as well. Right. And that's it's the job right. right it's the job so what I, you would they're trying to do is they're trying to kill sort of this area of comedy that when i like i said before eddie murphy andrew dice clay you know even like dude i, I used to watch eddie, Mur- Jam. eddie hold i gotta interrupt you again because yeah. i was a huge eddie murphy fan growing up he had a track on his album called faggot i know faggots revisited okay. on the next album faggot, right? <laughs> yeah can you imagine if someone decided to label one of their tracks faggot it's in this crazy. day and age and, but it was eddie murphy it was acceptable no one saw the hate behind it they saw the humor behind yeah. it but they didn't and you look it was ignorant as fuck if you look at that that bit it doesn't really hold up the reality of is course, of it course. may you know and but at the same time you go like it was a little slice of history i don't think that should be edited out of that oh, special on that oh. album you look at sort of what people laughed at at that time and it was a, just a different thing it was a different time so um but yeah, I just like darker stuff. So now I have this entire, these formative years where I became a comic and I started listening to fucking Stern and like the shit that I liked when I was a kid was darker. I liked the bad guys in pro wrestling. I yeah. used to like The Undertaker, right? Yeah. So everything that I sort of built this like opinion on, well now, 2019, well now I can't like dark comedy. Right. I can't like comedy that makes people a little bit uncomfortable. Right. My entire career, everything that I've been right. building for this time, you're telling me I'm no longer allowed? Right. That's crazy. And yeah. I'm not allowed. I don't get any TV. I don't get any radio. I don't get any support from the industry. But I've just created my own shit. Yeah. So and, that, and that's it. And I think more comics hey, need to do that. Yeah. Justin Silver. Hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? What's yeah, we're recording a pod. What? Great comic, Justin Silver, guys. What's up, buddy? What's up, y'all? Seen you before. Doing? Opie, what's up? Yeah, nice to see you, man. Nice to see you. That's like uh, in the restaurant business. It's like... I look at people, this lady was the other day, I look at her, I said, you're offended by like someone saying fuck or this or that, and you're outraged on Twitter, but then you go on Yelp, and you'll take a mom and pop restaurant and destroy it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So these two people that mortgaged their house to open this little restaurant didn't bring you your fucking water, mm-hmm. and now you want to blow the fucking place up. Yeah. And you hurt them online. Yeah, and what's fucked up is people do look at those reviews, it's kind of like, yeah, it hurts, like Yelp, it's you're real. Like, you're like, how... 
obviously, anybody going to Yelp is only going there to complain. The yes. fact that they're even put anything positive on Yelp is... Food Twitter. That's, that's, <laughs> food Twitter. that's an even crazier person to me. Somebody yeah, who's writing yeah. positive shit on Yelp, I'm like, get a life, <laughs> loser. <laughs> like, hey, look, if you can find a hair in your fucking salad, fine. I guess I sort of understand. But even so, like, it's like, you know, that this whole destroy a business, try to affect right. the business, especially when people are trying to figure it out. A business that opens up, they're going to make mistakes. Welcome yeah. to life. Like you have to make yeah. mistakes in order to figure right. out great things. Are you, you going to get out of here? I, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to introduce them. I got, I got to start a podcast in a minute anyway, guys. Yeah, I yeah. apologize. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I got to wrap this up in just a second yeah, here. No worries. No worries. Um, but uh, I want to introduce you to my business partner, Ralph Sutton. He's I know man. Ralph. Oh, you guys are... Uh, well, I, I don't know we've if we officially met. met. once for many, many years uh, Yeah, ago. what's up, Ralph? Hey, how are you? Um, right on. So, yeah, look, we'll, let's continue. I want to get you guys on Skanks both. Yeah, you guys yeah, we'll come out. To, man. We'll do, a, know, we'll do uh, another, uh, yeah, we'll do some. But just, congratulations, to, finish, man. just to finish up with the, uh, the venue from Skank Fest, though, yeah. you, you learn if you live long enough, like all these people that get outraged and pissed off, if you just hang out, I've, I've said it this way, the fucking circus leaves town and goes somewhere else. Oh, in a day yeah. or two. Yeah. All you have gone. to do is hang out for a day or two, That's and these it. these same idiots will go will be onto the next fucking That's thing. That's simple, simple as that. And they're so fair weather. It's like you can, I mean, dude, you can. One day they hate you, the next day they love you. I mean, just just one stupid thing that you say or do, and then all of a sudden everyone's yeah. swarming around. So I mean, you you live it. This is your yeah. whole your whole career for. <laughs> well, 30 years or whatever it is. And I apologize. Uh, last time I saw Lewis on the street, I had my little daughter on my back. <laughs> and we were, sort of, we were sort of... Such a lesbian. <laughs> no, I wasn't a, a lesbian. We were, uh, we were going to go. We no, were going to go. I, I liked it, dude. I tell you we right now, I go. said it on my show. I was like, Obi, I got to give Obi credit. He's a fucking real ass dude. He didn't give any <laughs> bullshit. He was like, dude, why are you talking shit about me on the internet? And his daughter was like, I can't make an eye contact with me. <laughs> she's on my like, back. I was like, dude, she's about to fucking jump on me. I told I'll my girlfriend, I was like, Kim, you might have to fuck this little girl up right now. She's like, wild. <laughs> we I'll going show on. claw your eyes out. <laughs> no, because it was like, uh, you know, over the years I've met you. I'll finish with this. And yeah, yeah. like, you're always cool to me. But then, of course. But then online, it, I felt like you were feeling the pressure you had to hate me or something. I'm like, dude, I, I know the guy. We, we sat with Bob Kelly a long time yeah, ago. We went to a barbecue together. Well, yeah, well, yeah. On, on, on the podcast. Yeah. On, on his podcast, uh, it was before you blew up, and you couldn't have been cooler to me. I was yeah, cool yeah, to you. Yeah, of course. Then I saw you at Bob Kelly's barbecues over the years, and you were so nice to me, my family, and my kids. And then start hearing shit online. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? I don't, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like that what shit. What that is. What that is. But what was that about? I'll tell you what it's about. It's. I didn't really know you that well. Me and Ant got close, and you just sort of get into the moment of talking shit, taking shots. Like, literally, Opie and Anthony, you guys are the fucking ball bus kings, right? right? You stand at that table. You should be afraid that Patrice and Jim Norton and Bob Keller are going to fucking uh, trash was... you. That that whole idea, be, being at the comedy cellar in the back, like, you're like, you got to watch where you're going. So... In my mind, I'm going like, yeah, dude, we're just fucking doing what we do. There's no nothing personal. Yeah. We're just trying to say yeah. the funniest thing in the moment. And then you start to realize as you get closer and you realize that there's 20 some odd years of, of history there that there is emotion there. It's not just dumb jokes no, and things where there's jokes, no connection for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There, there is real there is connection to what you guys are doing. So I, I, I was uh, I was a victim. That's really what I'm saying. <laughs> No, yeah, fair really. enough. No, you but know, my, I was, the I, evil I, Anthony Kumi. I was a victim well, of his. Well, I got under a spell. It well, was, whether uh, whether it's right or wrong, I, I just felt like Anthony went down a road. Uh, look, I, I'm just speaking for myself. That it, he made it like if you like Anthony, sure you can't like Opie anymore. Yeah. And and that split our audience. And I, I, you're a business guy. I I thought that was kind of a dumb move on his part. I mean, we didn't get along for a long time, and we had both kept quiet about it. And it's like. Dude, they can still enjoy the brand, the ONA brand. You know, yeah. it's kind of dumb to split that audience like he did. And I felt like anyone that got close to Ant for some reason felt like they had to uh, trash me. There was and a, I, there I was, was confused by that. There was just a ton. Most of the people that, sorry, trash me, yeah. Carl knows. Uh, that's up to him to, if he wants to talk about it. But then you I meet these. <laughs> <laughs> but, then but then you meet these guys that uh, trash you online and then. You know, they couldn't be cooler and nicer yeah. and like, oh, I'm a big fan. I'm like, big fan? Then why don't you fucking not play that bullshit online? Yeah. I, think, I mean, look, if it's a joke, it's one thing. You got to take you jokes get, you, get, you get caught up in it, dude. I mean, and also, and so you know, I've trashed Anthony. 
a thousand times over. We make fun of him beating up his chick, him <laughs> fucking losing everything, and keep the copying his fucking. Per- Dude, we trash Anthony all the time. The, the reality is, like, that's the world that we live in. Jim Norton, he's a fucking creep, brings girls on the road, fucking tries to bang them probably, bangs trannies. It's Bro- gross. Bro- you inserting probably. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's but that's what we do. I mean, Ralph Sutton, we call him Frankenstein to his face. He's standing right here. I mean, it's just, it's sort of the world we live in. I get it. And I think, once again, wow, some- no shit, man. You so- must win Halloween every year. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I think it's the, the world that we live in. And I think that, you know, no, it, I, especially I, at the time, tensions were a little higher at the time yeah, yeah, between yeah. you guys. And I think it just, you know, certain things, there was nothing ever serious for me, dude. I don't know. Like I said, I didn't, and I said this to you. I was like, I didn't, I don't even know you. I was like, I, I'm just Anthony's friend. So when we're sitting at a table with five people talking shit so and somebody throws out a fucking Opie yeah. joke, we're like, oh yeah, we'll throw out an Opie joke. Yeah, Why not? Uh, You're joke, famous, dude. It's like, I make fun of Pete no. Davidson. Pete Davidson is my boy, right? Yeah. Do you know how much shit I talk on oh, Pete Davidson? Yeah. Legendary. Do you know, because Legendary. he looks like he's a fucking zombie. He's banging yeah. all this hot <laughs> shit. Right. You know, but the, he came to me and be like, dude, why would you say these horrible things about me? I, I was like, dude, I'm sorry. No, I, no, you're no, famous. No, no. I'm making fun of the famous no, figure that, that is Pete yeah, Davidson. Yeah, Lois, I get that. I yeah. mean, you got to get, if you're, if you're going to attack people and, and take hits, you got to, you got to, you know, take a few blows. I get that. But it was the, their, the gray area was like, personal i'm like what the fuck yeah dude? I, I get it know. it got personal no i want to i want right, we're gonna wrap up right now i love you we're wrapping up right now all right yeah because I, I gotta i gotta all right. uh i want to oh, show no, them around here pizza. a little bit right. you want pizza yeah. let's, let's go to john's let's wrap or it up. lewis so uh yeah this was this was cool man yeah can i show you the studio real quick yeah yeah i'm gonna keep this on keep it on dude because you never know come on ralph you can two minutes in the top this is like a commune yeah, so There's we, people coming and going. Yeah, we and got uh, speakers out here and cameras out here, and uh, this is just for people. Did you just film us out, out yeah, there? Absolutely. Oh, oh that's, that's just that's great. So this, this, like, yeah, Rob, I'll give you the whole run This is a, a little, it's a listening station for Studio A, wow, but it also studio. in there. There's charging to, for your phones and headsets, so you can watch and listen without disturbing anyone. If you bring someone that you don't want them to be in the room with you, yeah, yeah, you want to hang out. These are two workstations with. The full Adobe suite and anything to do the editing. All the wires are hidden everywhere behind the walls. Everything's hidden so that this is starting to get boring for the podcast, but Sorry. it's amazing. Uh, you guys got an amazing area. setup. Hey, bro, what's up, oh, Opie? Good to see you. Good to see you. Right the, on. Hey, Bob. Executive producer of the network. There's bathroom and shit back there, and then in here we have two studios. Studio B. This is Brian. Hey, Brian. Hey, hey what's up, Brian? Yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, right on. It's a forced-person hey, studio soundproofing. There's cameras, lights, the whole nine over there. And then two two stations of Studio A. Shannon is one of the producers of the network. Hi. So is Nate. Jesus. And we also, we're allowed to sexually harass here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you have no, no HR. Podcast, yeah. baby. Up top. Hey, Shannon, nice tits. Come on. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. Hey. Yeah. So each, Make each sure you don't station, hire Roland. Each station <laughs> has a place to plug in your headphones, cough button, Charge your phone. Plug in a computer if you forgot to bring drops. Oh, or if you want like to that. like do bring in a source from your computer, yeah, like you watch this work. video. You can pull it up right yeah. from your little station right there. Each studio has three cameras. The LED lights can be any color, right? Um, and it's just you know with little area here to hang out. We have laptops here that you can pull up videos. It's just, it's gorgeous. And you can watch everything live as it's happening. Wow. It's a different source here. Right. Opie, your shit's garbage. No, you think? <laughs> Opie's, you think? Opie's studio is in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Opie's walking around with a fucking dialysis <laughs> machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think I felt. Can you show him next door, Lewis? <laughs> yeah, show him next door. Yeah, I'm, I'm, next door, I'm starting to think my career took a drop. Uh, <laughs> came to gas, <laughs> gas digital. Like Carl's like, offer. God, did I make a bad oh, mistake? A mess. <laughs> this one is this woman's a, is a photographer. You didn't even bring yeah. Not ours. And over here, this is our the other side of the business. Yeah, we we do our own in-house ad sales. We have our own team, and we also do all of our merch in-house as well. Oh shit, bro. So this is hey, the ad sales team. Robbie heads up ad sales. What's Cheers up, Robbie? Uh, there's three people here throughout the day for ad sales. And then Johnny heads up. Uh, What's up, Johnny? Media. Megan, we do our own hoodies, our own mugs, our own T-shirts and hats. We do stuff here, too. We, we do stuff off network, too. So it's yeah. not just the stuff that's on our network. Tuesdays right. with Stories, Norton stuff, Bobby Kelly stuff, all the merch, ad sales we off network our, as well. Our shirts. There's one going out right now. Very cool, Tuesday man. shirt going out right now. Everything gets custom if you look at the... Uh, you did it all. It all gets custom labeled right. in a custom bag, custom hang tags and stuff. Fucking amazing. You don't even have a fucking koozie. What'd you say, uh, Carl? Don't you we don't even have a koozie? We can get your koozies done pretty quick. We got our Ruizing hats. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get out of here. Pleasure to meet you, Nice to meet you again. Yeah, right on. All right, be good. Nice to meet you. All right. Damn, man. Opie, you're the man. 
Yeah, hit me up, dude. Th- we'll thanks talk. for answering all my questions. Thanks. I appreciate course, it. Dude, please. You're the Wait, best, let's guys. take a picture for the old internet. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, dude. Let me take one, too. That's a nice setup. That was a nice setup. And there you have it. Now we're back on the street. Men's haircut, $20. Children's haircut, $20. Ladies ha- You want a lady's haircut? It's only $20. You like your hair long? Hot towel shave, Stop 20. To people, please. Can we go? She, please? She's smiling. Weren't you happy? She wants to talk to me. I literally, she's looking like you. Weren't you happy that I interacted with you for a minute? Yes, I was. Yeah. See, because no one's friendly in New York. Ow, your you dog just spit me. You stepped on the dog. <laughs> you stepped on her dog, you fucking <laughs> And I said, ow, ow, it bit me. And she said, sorry. I like this. <laughs> Oh, it's always a problem with you. Look at these two pats. What? Come on, bro. We're not allowed to make fun of that? What? No, you can't now. You'd be in a lot of trouble. What? What is that? Like gender, gender neutral? I'm not getting involved. Which, what was that? I don't know. Gender neutral. What do I know? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't make fun of this hobbit either. Not it's making a, fun of anybody. It's a hobbit. It's just a beautiful day in New York. Where are we going now? Back to the restaurant, bro. That was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. This is cool, man. What a setup they have, right? Beautiful. Man. God damn. A lot different than our setup. Shh. (laughs) (laughs) People think we're rock stars. Remember the lounge Westwood One gave us? That was almost nice. That thing was stupid. (laughs) Huh? It was... It had, like, third... Like... One third size furniture. <laughs> it's like a dollhouse. <laughs> I hated it in there. I couldn't set up a camera because we couldn't go back far enough to get everyone in the in the video. And Mike had never bought a charger or anything. <laughs> and he kept like setting up. Like the minute we were gonna start podcasting, he would start like building furniture <laughs> or like brushing his hair. Or something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I like cute girls. So you really got a lot of glitter on you from last night? My whole belly button area looks like I crashed into a disco ball. <laughs> uh, what a good day. <laughs> what a good day. <laughs> yeah, I check you out on uh, Lewis Instagram. Lewis was cool, right? Yeah, Lewis was cool. I only met him once before that. And he's got a beautiful outfit. I mean, I got to tell you, Opie, between me and you, I was embarrassed. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because we're walking around with this dialysis machine, and he's got this whole thing going on. Yeah, but we do it different. We get out there with the people. Isn't yeah, but they great? air conditioning and shit. Ah, you don't need air conditioning. Like a cute producer. Yeah. We don't need producers. I mean, at our peak, we had Littlefoot. <laughs> <laughs> you want a papaya thing? No. You guys do the papaya thing? No. No? No papaya thing? No uh, lie. What? Why are you walking away from the papaya lady? Because ladies? you're talking to people with your fucking autism again. You gotta leave people alone. That's a beautiful apartment right here. That's some rich as fuck. They that. can't see it. It looks like it's an old uh, firehouse. So you gotta it's explain an old firehouse, things. Yeah. yeah. Old firehouse. <laughs> I think Anderson Cooper lives there. No, he doesn't. Yo, Coops! What I am on th- once. What? I'm gonna see if Coops is there. Oh, oh. What? Come on. Enough. Anderson Cooper. Anyone that owns that house can shoot you. Look nope. at the size of that thing. Yeah, but he lives in an old firehouse. I saw it on the internet once. And he was on my show once with Andrew Dice Clay, and we bonded a little bit. You I and saw Anderson it. Cooper? Yeah, because I saw his documentary on his mom, so which I, was boring. <laughs> but I made believe, mom? But made believe it was great. She Who was, was his like, mom? She just died. Her name was... Uh, Gloria Vanderbilt or something. Oh, dude, he's a Vanderbilt? Yes, he doesn't have to work. Oh, he's got cash. Yo, Coops! Stop, he doesn't live there. Does Anderson Cooper live there? They're landscapers. They don't even know where they live. What are you doing? We missed an opportunity. We could have hung out with Anderson Cooper. This is why people scream fuck you to you on the street, because you say crazy (laughs) shit. I had to tell Dice that Anderson Cooper was gay. You told Dice that? <laughs> yes. You mean no. he didn't figure that out? <laughs> no. Dice was in and he was talking about, you know, he saw sees Anderson Cooper and then he's like, yeah, you're the TV guy or whatever, right? And he's like, and he's like, you must get a lot of pussy, you know. Look at Dice, that sweet R8. Dice doing his pussy thing? What is that? An Audi R8. That's gorgeous. It's beautiful, huh? You should get one of them, Oops. And then Dice was doing his thing, right? You know, about how much pussy he must get because he's a good looking guy and he's on TV and then. 
then Cooper looks at me like, help me here. And I'm like, uh, Dice, uh, he don't like the, the puss. And then I think Dice goes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 That's funny. That was funny. Let's get this conversation on our podcast. No. He's yelling at somebody. He's from Croatia. He'll stab you with a pen. Sir, you got a wobbly wheel. Your wheel just wobbled. The wheel's about to fall off. Be careful. Oh, yes? It's broken yeah. In this, uh, huh? Broken inside this. Uh, yeah, the wheel's broke. Yes, yes. All right, all right, all right. I'm being pulled away. I was just trying Come to be on. friendly. What, bro? This is me. Why are you talking to people? Because they, they, they're lonely. No, that guy was 100% not lonely. <laughs> <laughs> what gave it away? He didn't say I was lonely. He had his earbuds in. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you have a wobbly <laughs> wheel. But it was all about it. Oh, if you ever came up to me like that, I'd give you a suplex. <laughs> why? why would you <laughs> like If do I didn't that? know you, why? with the anger that I harbor inside, and you want to talk to me about my fucking luggage, I would burn you alive. All right. Where are we eating? Do you have we time to eat? Back on the west side. We'll eat up by where we're at. We're going to eat at La Cubana? If you want. All right. You can take another seafood salad to go. <laughs> <laughs> that was such an OP move. What was wrong with taking a seafood salad it to go? It was just funny. The kids you asked for it. two of them. <laughs> one for me and one for my wife. Is that bad? No, it's fine. We're boys. We are boys. I know she only gave me three empanadas. Huh? You only That's an me? order. Oh, I got kids. I didn't know. I, was, I don't run a fucking Popeye's. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wanted an empanada. We had to split them. Oh, I could just see you in like, the buttonless shirt splitting an empanada. Quietly complaining that I only gave you three. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, I can feel it. I can just feel you. Like just. Oh, you only gave me three. <laughs> well, we took uh, uh, Gloria's dessert well, yeah, home. Let's touch base tomorrow. What was it? Some leche. Dulce de leche. No, what no, did, it did, was uh, tres leches. It was nice. You liked that, huh? It was really good. Did you yeah. have enough pieces for the fan? <laughs> yeah, because they they scooped out healthy portions for us. As you're counting your empanadas. <laughs> <laughs> you're really butthurt about the fucking <laughs> the fuck? It's an order. And it, you know, a lot of it has to do with the way that you talk. <laughs> what do you mean? You're like, hey, can I get some empanadas? <laughs> I said empanadas. Yeah, you six... got plural. That's three. I took six years of Spanish. I know how to say empanada. You don't know. You didn't take six years of Spanish. I swear to God I did. Where? At that, that fake college that you went to? Where you drink all that Genesee no, beer? No. I got a 64. <laughs> I needed a 65 to pass, so I went and saw the teacher. Right. And I blinked the baby blues, and she gave me the extra point up oh, top. Shit. True story. All right. The baby blues, huh? <laughs> oh, gosh. They're looking a little gray these days. <laughs> I have the same eyes as like 30 million fucking people. Oh, you're jealous of blue eyes. I am jealous. I wish I had light eyes. I don't know how much better I would do. <laughs> oh, no, it gets you into places. It does, huh? Oh, God. Easy. Pepsi! Big fan! What are you doing? What? Why would you do that? You guys support. The guy's delivering trucks and delivering fucking sodas. He gave me a fist. Degrees. He gave me a fist like he was at that the... Was, no, he just didn't have 19... time to pull his finger out. He gave me a fist like he was at the 1972 Olympics. Why are we walking, bro? I... I I'll walk all the way to your restaurant. <laughs> I will fucking not walk all the way. Come on, man. You're hungover. This is good for you. Get some blood pumping. Oh, Hi, stop, Tim Apple. stop. Stop. It's it. Tim Apple. Stop. That's not his name. Why does he have all sorts of, all his writings right on the window? Because he lives in the Lower East Side and he hasn't paid rent in nine years. He wants, I bet he wants us to ask him about his writings on the window. He doesn't. He doesn't. He said something about patriotism. Maybe he was, but I don't want to hear it. Let's just say we're big Trump supporters and see what happens. I'm not going to do that here in this city. They'll set you on fire. This politics shit is crazy. People are out of their minds. I support. You support what? The two guys were hanging, uh, hugging, so I figured I'd give them a little I support. Support for them hugging? You support guys hugging? Yeah, because, you know. Can we get in a cab? All right. Fucking Yoko Ono. That's not Yoko Ono. Look like it. No, it didn't. It looked like Yoko Ono. Yoga and coffee. Double fucking boo. <laughs> Where? It's the worst t-shirt. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? Yeah. 
That's funny. I think we got a cab here, bro. Yeah, bro. I want to thank Luis Gomez for making time for us today. That was cool. I want to thank Carl for coming with me today. That was Ugh, cool. It was exhausting. Why was it exhausting? I'm we had tired, fun. Bro. We had fun. Wasn't this nice? Me and I you gotta, just hanging out. I got to cook now till 11 o'clock at night. But wasn't this nice? This is going to be the best part of your day. Taxi! You don't have to say taxi. He can't hear you. you just raise your hand. Taxi! Nope, that one's taken. That one's taken. We, we could, like, rent a city bike. I will never, ever in a million, unless we're going to send it into the river, I'm not going to run into the city. All right, we're, uh, we're stuck. All right, we're going to turn. Stuck. We just started looking for a cab. How do you give up in 30 <laughs> seconds? <laughs> we live different lives. We're stuck. <laughs> we're not stuck. We're in the middle of Manhattan. But, but I don't see a cab, and I don't have Uber on my phone. Yo, what's up with you not having Uber, bro? It's just because it means I got to talk to people. You know what I mean? You got to have that conversation now when you're in an Uber because they so don't have okay the par- partition. To homeless people, people on heroin, but Uber, you have a problem. Yeah, I'm stuck in the car. It's di- it's different. You sure you didn't get your Uber canceled because you had your kids walking all over the fucking? No, we're good again. Oh. I, th- I think we're uh, closing in on a nice four rating. We're good again. It's hot, bro. Ugh, I hate this. I think we should keep walking. No, we're gonna get a cab here or we die here. It's just that's the way it's going to be. I hate my life. Why do you hate your life? I'm exhausted, bro. I got to get this glitter off my stomach. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we got to start walking. No, we don't. Or are you going to be late for work? I'm going to be late if we walk. What's up, pod squad? We like the pod squad. It's so weird in there. It's uh, the the Facebook group, Opie Radio Podcast. They're good, man. They're good. He thinks you're hot. Why would you do that? That's good. That's not good. Excuse me, ma'am. Opie, I date more girls in a week than fucking... I never say that. Excuse me. Stop it. She didn't turn around. Of course she didn't. Look at me. I'm sweating on fucking (laughs) Fourth Avenue. (laughs) My gut's out. (laughs) I hate this shit, man. Oh, you exhaust me. You really, <laughs> truly exhaust that's me. Why, that's why I'm only allowed to see you like once every two weeks now. Yeah, let's do 11. <laughs> that's good, right? Yeah, get Carl out of the crypt and let's do a fucking 11. Come on. All right, guys, it's 100 degrees in New York City. I got to get Carl in a cab and get him back to La Cubana. Make sure you check out La Cubana on 15th Street. Across the street from the Chelsea Market. He would appreciate it, right? Yeah. You like when they stop by. I love it. A lot of fans stop by. And I guess that's it. Um, Opie Radio on uh, the Instagram and the Twitter. All right. How do you get glitter off your stomach? <laughs> it's so stuck on there. It's like in my hairs and stuff. <laughs> you got your natural glues. Ugh. I disgust myself. I don't even know what day it is. I know it's going to be busy, though. Fuck me. I think it's the weekend now, bro. I think. I'm going to cook a lot today. Yeah. Cooking fucking is for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> you probably should have thought about that before now. Like I come downstairs like, oh, that was great. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> like, do you have a Gatorade? <laughs> Want to get like a lemon ice or something? A what? What are we on a fucking date? No, a lemon ice. No. Oh. Why didn't you go? Why didn't you go? I crossed the street without you. I by a giant truck. You don't got any, like, spring in your step? I don't even know where I am. We're on the Lower East Side. Ugh. It's Cooper Union. It's where all the architects come to school. Fancy. I just realized architects don't make a lot of money. Unless, like, you're super famous. Oh, that was a cab we could have got, but you were too oh, busy cool. pointing out Cooper Union. This is just exhausting. <laughs> I would have never done this if I knew this was going to be what's, what was going to happen. Do you have an Uber on your phone? No, my phone's dead. Why is your phone dead? Well, I was at my restaurant taking a nap from yesterday. And I said, let's go see Lewis. And he said, go see Lewis. And I'm like, all right, but I didn't have any of my stuff ready. And now we're walking in a park. How are you going to get a cab here? I was going to ask the locals. Don't you dare. 
I will throw you in those bushes. I think I fucked up my knee running across the street. That was Ron Roby. <laughs> that was a weird trot. <laughs> it's because I have a bad lower back, so I compensate. Oh, you always have that. Ba- you have that back problem still? Not, not as much because I'm doing the DDP uh, program, Diamond Dallas Page, for real. A little plug for him. I'm going to kick this pigeon. I think I got us, bro. Got it? I think I got us. I think I got us. No, jump in. I got us. All right, guys. This is where we say goodbye as we get in a cab and Ooh. get called back to La Cubana. Thanks for checking out the podcast. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the support. All right. We're going to uh, La Cubana. Stop it.